Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. As I speak right now, all of Melbourne is out on the town except for us three, which is why there is not a single person watching us. Right, here we go, one person's joined us, there we go. It's feeling a bit left out there for a moment. Um, welcome everybody to the show from Facebook users and YouTube people as well. How exciting is that as we prepare or get ready for our big lockdown? Once again, I'm joined by my lads, uh, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, laddies? Excellent. Yeah, not bad. Not, good, not good. because I'm in Melbourne, but I'm in Ballarat, so I'm really happy about that. Very good. MPS, what were you going to say? I'm all good. Just yeah. all good. What can I say? All right, we're going to move on as the evening progresses, and we're into the uh, a year. What year, MPS? Help us out here. What year we're looking at today? We have 1986. 24, yeah, 24 years ago. Trying to, trying to do the math in my head. No, 34 years ago. There you go. Both the contenders, you both missed it. Um, <laughs> 34 years ago. All right, so let's see what happened in 1986. Let's see. The first PC virus starts to spread. Do you know what it was called? Was it? <laughs> Do you know what it was called? No. Oh, you, no, oh, no, when you tell me what. The brain? No. Brain, brain, no. brain, 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 brain. Body virus, is that right? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Uh, in slightly sadder news that year, the sh uh, shuttle Challenger blows up. Yep. Mm. Um, uh, Pixar Animation Studios is founded. Uh, the Soviet Union launches the Mir space station. So there you go. It's just... Merely there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was. Is that a me cat? <laughs> um, the Japanese uh, probe, the sushi, not sushi's in the fish, but I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. Uh, flies by Halley's Comet. It started because that was around around that time. Um, now, I read this the wrong way, so I'm going to read what it was, and it, I'm not going to read you the story, but then I'm going to read you how I read it. So the Lebanese hostage crisis, and I read it as the lesbian hostage crisis. <laughs> I got that a little wrong. <laughs> Good on you. Um, that's, that, <laughs> uh, Lorimar Pictures launches its mass media company. Did you read um, what Colin wrote? MPS, so Mia, and so far. Yeah, Good on you, Colin. Well done. <laughs> Um, Chernobyl occurred uh, in that year. So uh, for those who play Call of Duty, 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. They did, indeed. Um, they did. Royal News, Prince Andrew, Duke of York, and Sarah Ferguson uh, marry. Mm -hmm. And didn't that last a long time? Bing! Bing! Yeah. Now, here's, here's a – we don't normally bring weather ones up, but this is because it's Australia, um, and it's pretty much on the coast – on the border of, of Victoria anyway, but South Australia uh, and New South Wales had a low pressure system and it uh, redeveloped off, uh, that was in South Australia, redeveloped the New South Wales coast and dumped a record 328 millimetres or 12.9 or inches in the old scale of rain on one day. Wow. So wow. Yeah. We, can can, we can't talk about can wet that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that happened in Melbourne, this is artistic, if you will. Two weeks after it was stolen, the Picasso painting, Weeping Woman, is found in a locker at the Spencer Street Station in Melbourne. You guys I remember, remember that? that. I remember. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So who knew we had a Picasso in Melbourne, for starters? There you go. Uh, <laughs> and that was the most exciting thing. There was a lot of negative, bad, boomy things and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and again, in Melbourne, the only other thing which was a bit of a negative was the Russell Street bombing, bombings. Um, so yeah, and yeah, so other than that, I have not a lot for 1986. Very good, Jeffro. English, what have you got? For English side? Yeah, so from the uh, the UK side of things, uh, this was the year that the firm to the opera opened up, so uh, and of course, we know that um, put. Andrew Lloyd Webber really, really, really on the map. And, and of course, Michael Crawford too. Whoever thought he could sing. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it was also the year that uh, politician um, Jeffrey Archer actually had to resign because uh, uh, he was caught out uh, with a prostitute trying to pay some hush money. Now, you sort of think, my goodness, you know, what a scandal. But if that was to happen today, I think you'd have no problems at all. No Nobody problems wants. at all. Um, in the um, in, in the people born this year, I'll just rattle off the names and um, see if you uh, happen to uh, recognise any of these. Uh, we have Misha Barton, Gemma Atherton. Uh, yeah. Jamie Bell. Misha Sorry, Misha Barton was on the OC, wasn't she? Yes. Um, Robert Pattinson and uh, Ellie Goulding. And uh, in, in the desk, uh, one I remember quite well, uh, Phil Linnett, who you may remember from um, Then Lizzie, uh, Ray Milland, classic actor, Kerry Grant, and uh, for all our Doctor Who fans out there, Ian Marta died that particular year. He played Dr. Harry Sullivan. Uh, movies out that year, not a, not a big selection. Uh, Beagles, The Adventures in Time, uh, Highlander and Labyrinth. So a uh, couple there, but, you know, that's that's about it in the uh, movie front and on the television front. Uh, were they ever doing some serious drama on television? So this was the year that the drug abuse storyline happened in Grange Hill, believe it or not. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the big scandal where on Coronation <laughs> Street the pub burnt down and caused serious heartbreak. Uh, this is this is the this is where uh, main character Pat Sugden dies after rolling her car down a hillside to avoid a flock of sheep. It was this is this is um, champagne television here. And uh, speaking of champagne television, it was also the year Doctor Who returned after uh, a seventeen-month break with Trial of the Time Lord. So. Um, it was good to have uh, Doctor Who back. Uh, and also, this was also the year that Neighbours launched on um, uh, BBC television. So um, don't we still laugh about that, uh, people? <laughs> and uh, just finally, this was also the year that the first advert for a sanitary towel is broadcast on British television. So just to leave on a high note, high note, no. Uh, I'm going to talk about sanitary towels, and um, they were on television in 1986 in the UK. How progressive is that? Far out. A um, couple of yeah. questions. Uh, Top Gun, what year did Top Gun come out? It came out. I was going to mention that, but, you know, you guys are going to wait for the movies. So, right. Colin, slow down. Stop anticipating right. our theory. Yeah, Colin, let's slow, slow down, baby boy. Slow down. Uh, here's one for you, uh, Jeffro. Biggles is getting a Blu-ray edition release. How about that? Ah, uh, What? There you go. There's another click. They'll release here. anything, Bill, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I guess Big Book has is got a cult following, so particularly as a comic and a story from W.E. Johns. Very so, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that um, it gets a, a Blu-ray. Very good. And Aaron has asked, did Hamels wrap up at 1986? Uh, no, it was 1987 in May. So that happened the following year. MPS, you wanted to say something? And uh, in Doctor Who, you forgot Jenna Coleman was born that year unless you really don't care about the newer version of Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, was she born? Yeah. Oh, no. I'll take what? your word for it. I like yeah. that. Was she born? Well, she's just an apparition that sort of floats around the set or something, doesn't she? <laughs> uh, very good. All right, Thank let's move you, on. Wiki. Yeah, good on you. All right, so movies, sci-fi movies for 986, a very big year, actually, because the 80s was a huge time for movies that were coming out. So in no particular order, I've only just picked out these ones. Of course, Aliens. Oh, man, how good is that? Good old aliens, you know. So uh, everybody loved good old aliens. And a bit of the old, let's rock! Absolutely mega, mega hit from 1986 with a bit of Rambolina, as uh, Sigourney Weaver was known as. And uh, I think uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find uh, a lot of fans who did not like that film. Um, now, this one's going to cause a bit of a buzz. The Fly, <laughs> the Fly came out in 1986. Oh. Uh, a very, very adult and very violent version of the 50s slash 60s films. 
And uh, for those who uh, didn't know, if you ever look at the transporting devices that Seth Brundle made, they were modelled after the engine of a Ducati, I believe. So there you go. Or as the uh, actress said, um, Jenna Davis said, oh, I design a phone booth. So there you go. I like how they're actually meant to be transportation devices, but they didn't actually use the word transporter from Star Trek. They said teleport or something. So they, but exactly the same principle. So there you go. Um, Flight of the Navigator. Uh, came out uh, that year as well. And they actually featured some very early computer-generated uh, and effects with some morphing. So because um, you know, prior to that, Last Starfighter had come out a couple of years before then, and then Flight and the Navigator sort of took it to another step further. So they didn't do anything organic. That didn't come until later, until the Abyss a couple of years later. But uh, that was one key thing about the Flight of the Navigator. They had all this morphing that was going on. Invaders from Mars came out that time with Toby Hooper, Hoover, Toby Hooper film, which was a remake of uh, the Invaders from Mars back in the 50s. So that was actually quite – and that was a horror film. It wasn't a Jeff Ryan. I don't think I ever saw it. Is that right? It, it, it was not so much horror horror, but, I mean, it had um, spooky supernatural elements in it. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a movie I would certainly recommend. Um, it's visually very stunning and um, – uh, yeah, it's not so much. I mean, Toby Hooper does horror. Of course, he's famously yeah. known for doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But uh, I would say more a supernatural rather than a horror movie. Um, right. cool. Yeah, very good. Uh, of course, for Star Trek fans, if you want to have a whale of a time at this movie, I've got this reference right. Finally, it's good old Star Trek for the Voyage Home, one of the most popular movies, all because of the fact that the average person could relate to it. And, Kirk and the crew were running around in San Francisco uh, trying to find some nuclear vessels. So that was uh, a very, very popular film. Worked very, That's very good. well. Uh, uh, Transformers the movie was more than meets the eye. The animated film came out based mm. on the TV series, which was a huge hit, and a lot of people loved that. And I knew a lot of collectors, uh, Jeffrey did too, who were collecting Transformers at the time. And, of course, the merchandise was out. It was great for everybody. Um, not all movies in 86 were guaranteed to be absolute winners. And, of course, Howard the Duck came out in 1986. Oh. And uh, that, it, it, like, everybody sunk the boots into George Lucas on this one, but he was only the producer. He didn't actually physically yeah. make the damn thing. So, uh, yes, they poured a lot of time, money, and effort into this, and it was an absolute shocker. So, uh, yes, it didn't uh, do well at all. And, of course, how the Duck made a reappearance in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go. Uh, just one I thought I chucked in for good measure, because I do remember seeing this in the cinemas, was the Wraith. It was the dude who gets yeah. killed in the car, and the car comes back. And they wouldn't call him a ghost. They never called him an apparition. It was a wreath, man. It was a wreath in this really, really groovy car. So and he had he stood there with his helmet and all these light, bloody lights on him and all the sort of bizzo. I was like, yeah, right over. Space Camp uh, came out uh, in uh, 86 as well. Don't recall seeing it myself, I've got to say, but it was actually no. quite popular. I loved it. Loved Space uh, Camp. Did you? I love yeah. Space Camp. What made me want to be an astronaut? Very good. Um, now, this one sucked. There were some movies which ultimately are complete shit, and King Kong Lives was one of them. Oh, that I like was it. Utter, right, with Linda Hamilton straight out of the Terminator into King Kong Lives, and it was utter crap, right? No, so, don't believe him. It was lovely. It was wonderful. So wonderful, in fact, that of the 10 reviews from Rotten Tomatoes, it has 10, 10 reviews, what, one, zero, 10 has 0%. Rating. So uh, there you go. So no fake one fake news. It fake news. <laughs> so it was a sequel to the 1976 film. And the thing I remember about this film is like, how cheesy is this? They clearly got a guy in a suit, right? Okay. And they've got to have the sequence where he's carrying a full size 36 meter bloody crocodile. And in real life, he carried a baby crocodile, right, which is only like this big. So as a human being carrying a baby crocodile in the ape suit. But the problem is a baby crocodile, like a baby human being, doesn't look like an adult at all. And you can clearly tell, hey, that's a baby crocodile. What's the deal with that? So, oh, an absolute horrendous film. So um, there you go. I think they, the catch line was America's greatest hero is back and he's not happy. I recall that's what the, the thing was. So there you go. Um, in 86, number five was Indeed Alive with Short Circuit, which was a uh, hugely successful and popular film when it came out. So, um, yes, a lot of people remember that with number five. Uh, and on top of that, here's the last one I'm just going to chuck in. There was a movie called Not – you've had The Terminator, right? So you're thinking, well, that's a grouse name. What else can you make that sounds like it but isn't it? It's not The Terminator. It's Eliminator. Terminator. No, sorry. actually, that was a, I don't know what year that was, but in 86, uh, you had the exterminator. Sorry, just – sorry, eliminators. I'll get it right eventually. Oh, eliminators, the eliminators yeah. right? Denise Crosby was in that before she ended up in Star Trek The Next Generation, and they had a robot dog, right? You always go robots now. Robots are the key thing, right? And if you remember Star Crash – no, the humanoid. 
there was actually a robot dog in that. But anyway, there's a robot dog in this. So what you call your dog who's a robot, you call him Spot, right? So whenever you're watching the movie and you go, let's see if we can spot the dog. Oh, there he is over there. Oh, hang on. Is Spot the name or Spot? The... Oh, you make it so... Spot. Spot the dog. I love that. So there you go. All Dalmatians. If you own a, ever own a Dalmatian, you just got to call it Spot. And if you want to, get a pen and see if you can join all the dots and make a picture. So, uh, <laughs> oh, golly, golly, golly. So um, there you go. Uh, Kelvin has said the Alienator as well. I'm not sure uh, if that came out in 86. It might have actually. Oh, yeah, the Wraith, the early version of the Stig. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's that, that sort of works. And, um, oh, yes, Kelvin has said Space Camp came out at the same time as the Challenger disaster. Yeah, it probably wasn't the best timing, was it, eh? And Aaron agrees with me on with uh, regarding something, but I don't know what it was. So, uh, uh, yeah, The Golden Child was pretty cool. Actually, The Golden Child, if that came out in 86, had a fantastic trailer. Do you ever remember it? Where you've got this dude wrapped up um, in this all this winter gear and he's riding a bison or something. And they're saying, and here is the greatest hero who ever lived who's got to take on the universe and you know, make the world a better place. And, of course, he stops in front of the camera, takes his mask off, and it's Eddie Murphy, right? And he's Eddie Murphy playing Eddie Murphy, right? And he's yelling at the camera and he's swearing. And he's like, oh, well, what am I doing here? Well, I'm not supposed to be here. And it was absolutely fantastic. And that was the trailer for The Golden Child. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Uh, who's it back to? NPS, I think it is. So well, there you go. Very good. All right. So other movies that came out that year, yes, we'll do Top Gun. Uh, which the sequel is meant to be coming out this year. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China came out as well. Yay. Yeah. Everybody's favourite Take a Sicky Day, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> came out. And we all love the smell of napalm in the morning. That was Platoon. Platoon came oh. out then. Yeah. I was say Apocalypse Now came out in the 70s, but that's where the quote came from. But anyway, go on. Yep. Yeah. Apocalypse Now was the music. Uh, the Karate Kid Part 2 came out. Stand By Me, one of Will Wheaton's first films. Um, teenage uh, sort of story. Uh, Critters, which tried to bring the, the cheesy version of uh, Gremlins to come out. Mm. Uh, another war film, which was on TV the other week, and I love this film, Clint Eastwood in Heartbreak Ridge. One of the best sort of films around. Um, Little Shop of Horrors. Um, oh, yes. made in history. Another one with Steve Martin, The Three Amigos, another favourite oh, yeah. film. Yeah, Jeffro and I know all about that, don't we, dude, from Ghostbusters? We, we <laughs> do, yes. Ripped off for uh, the fan film. Now, do you remember what the raunchiest film around in the 80s was? Uh, with Not Science? Oh, remember? no, um, the Kim Passenger oh. movie. Yeah, nine uh, and a half. You can, leave your, you can leave your hat on. Uh, what's yeah, that called? Base? No, that was basically that was, that was uh nineties. No, nine and a half weeks came nine out. Nine and a half weeks. And good old Australian crocodile Dundee. Oh golly! So there you go. That was films in terms of television. Uh, shows that started in nineteen eighty six was Alf, uh, Perfect Strangers. Um, Oprah started her show in 1986 and went to 2011, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, Starman is the series that came out. Mm -hmm. uh, Silverhawks. Now, here's two that had to have both name changes or, you know, were both different in name. Yeah, the real Ghostbusters, which was based on the films, and Ghostbusters, which was based on another sort of version of Ghostbusters. Uh, Centurions, which is another cartoon series uh, which I loved, and I think Daniel's another loves that one as well. And a series that finished that year was one with two black kids, a white rich man, his oh, daughter. Yeah, and every yeah. time you say, "What you talking about, Willis?" Yeah, different stories ended in 1986, and they oh, all went on oh. to blooming careers afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. Um, uh, Catherine, you are right. Data's cat was called Spot. So, yes, well done. Very good. That's good. And that was 1986. Actually, it's funny you mentioned Starman. Um, like, Starman as a movie far superseded the series. I don't know if it, Jeff, are you, did you watch the series at all? Yeah, I, I, I did watch it a long time ago. It actually had uh, uh, Robert Hay, the guy that you may remember as playing Ted Stryker from Airplane. So, to see him that kind of sort of more serious role was a there's a bit of an adjustment, mm. uh, but I haven't seen it for, uh, for quite some time, and I know it only ever went for about one series, I think. Mm. 
Yeah, so there's an example where it survived much better as a film as it did uh, anywhere else. So there you go. Very, very good stuff. Uh, yes, Aaron, you are right. 86 was a good year for movies. If you're a sci-fi fan back in the 80s, it was just the golden age uh, for fans like us because there was so much to pick from and there was a lot of quality, a lot of new stuff too, long before uh, all this remake and reboot and reimagining stuff started out. MPS, were you going to say something? You had your mouth open there for a tick. I was. I'm, I'm going to pick Daniel up on a, on a title here. Uh, okay, I can see why it was wrong. Yeah, no, Daniel's right. Foot Shot Flats did come out in 86, but it came out here in 87. Okay. So that's where, yeah. you, where another bonus engine is with terms of movie dates and releases. Yeah, so yeah, it's all right. Here's a uh, piece of trivia for you. Uh, one of the movies that you mentioned, Critters, they're actually in the yeah. process now of doing a uh, a remake of that, believe it or not. Yeah, of course they believe are. Believe it yeah, or no, not. But... Yes, yeah. why not? Remake everything, exactly right. So there you and go. The race will be, do they get that up and running or do they get Gremlins 3 up and running first? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, there you go. Um, all right, so we're going to wrap up now. It's just gone uh, sort of just after 9.30. We've still got like two and a half hours before we're, uh, like the cell, the walls go up. Um, MPS, any final words you want to mention? Uh, no, nothing from this side of things, but um, six weeks will go quick, guys and girls. Yeah, yeah. And if you get stuck, just come back in next week and uh, join us. And uh, just, oh, my God, I can't handle it anymore. Jeffro, any final words, mate? No, not much. Um, stay safe. Um, do the right thing. And... Um, we look forward to seeing all you guys uh, next week on the uh, the show. Very good. So there you go. Put the word out for anybody who's out there looking for someone or some people to talk to. Uh, so come and join us next Wednesday at 8 o'clock, okay? So all you guys watching this now know about us, but we need to spread the word to others out there who desperately need a bit of nerdy talk. What can I say? And with that in mind, make sure you all don't forget to check the YouTube channel. Stay nerdy. Okay. All right. See ya. See ya.